Tony, we just listened to um, Andrew Berry's uh, talk. Some of the takeaways that you had from uh, from what he said. Well, I was a little surprised that he confirmed that John Johnson is uh, going to be leaving the team. You know, usually Andrew doesn't drop <laughs> news, but it's been widely reported throughout the day, so I guess they figure it was time. Um, he seems uh, uh, very calm at this point of the transaction season. If everyone believes this is the most urgent offseason in Brown's history, probably is because it's the next one. Uh, he seems like he's up for the task. So uh, uh, they got a lot of work to do, though, a, a lot of uh, 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 players to plug in for some uh, new coordinators, particularly on defense. Yeah, let's talk about that. Jim Schwartz, we talked a little bit earlier today. I love the hire. You've been around the, the Browns in the NFL much longer than I am, and, and I mean that respectfully. Yeah, <laughs> what, what did you think of the uh, of the hire? Oh, I thought it was a, a home run uh, from the from the moment they identified their five candidates. Uh, I rated Schwartz number one and Brian Flores one B, and uh, and I think Schwartz uh, is track record, is proven defensive coordinator. Uh, uh, with the style of defense that they want, that, that they play, it's not going to be dissimilar. It's a four-three, uh, and, and also his, uh, uh, let's say, enthusiasm about an analytics made it a no-brainer for this group, right? But he, Jim's been doing it uh, long before that word was even used. So I thought that was a great hire and a, exactly the right guy for this time and place. Um, we'll get to Bubba Ventron in a minute, but defensively. What do you expect to see from a Jim Schwartz defense with the Browns? Well, he, tend, he tends to make the uh, uh, defensive linemen stars. Uh, he believes uh, pass defense starts with the pass rush. You know, recently a lot of people believe it starts at the back end, and I never understood that. So maybe this, hopefully, this represents a shift uh, in their focus from the back end to the front end. And I asked Andrew Berry that specifically, <laughs> and you know, he kind of talked around it. But that's the way I took that hire. It's time to focus resources, energy, and uh, capital into the defensive front. Is Jim Schwartz the type of, of defensive coordinator do you think that can make some of the young guys better? Just by he's going to say, all right, this guy doesn't do this. Let's not ask him to do that. Well, his track record with several teams is that he, he gets the most out of his defensive players, whether they're you know, high-priced free agents or high draft picks or medium draft picks. So, yeah, I think, you know, they need some improvement on the front of the depth chart there, right? They need some veteran starters, I believe. But I think that doesn't mean that the guys they've drafted along the way aren't going to be developed. So I think that's, you know, a major task of his to, to, to do that in addition to um, finding the right pieces up front uh, this year. He is a guy that players like playing for. So I, you would think the young guys are kind of the developmental guys. They may not go as heavy in the draft uh, defensive line as some people think because they have those young guys. Exactly. I, I really think uh, you know, mock drafts prior to free agency are worthless, <laughs> and, you know, unless you have the first or second pick. Uh, by the time the draft rolls around in April, end of April, the Browns will have acquired, I believe, at least a couple defensive linemen. And, the, and those will have the most impact, and that would free Barry up to using that number two pick on other needs, which I think the other need is wide receiver. Um, so uh, that's the way I'm looking at this transaction season. We'll see, you right. know, how they how they go from there. Andrew Barry said, "Hey, opportunity sometimes, you know, if 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 a, if a veteran receiver is offered to him, like Amari Cooper was last year, hey, you got to pounce on it." But but I, I think that they attack the defensive line in free agency because they got you're right they got a lot of young players there that that he has to develop. Do you think they go, you know, high end, you know, 18, 15, 18 million, or do you do you see him doing more of the six, seven, and, and getting a couple of them that that can come in and plug in? Um, again, it's, it's going to depend on who's available. You know, t uh, t today on Tuesday, the Washington Commanders franchise, Deron Payne, who was probably the number one, would have been the number one available defensive tackle uh, in free agency. So you cross that one off the list. Uh, but I think I think they have them rated. And I, I would think you do one of the high end and one of the year-by-year -year guys, right? But I think, I think Schwartz's record is he likes veterans up front. 
they are, as we've said, they've already got the young guys in, 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 you know, uh, on hand. But you need someone to teach those guys his system. It might help if you've played for Schwartz, and there's a number of players who may be available who have. 